On day one, I rose out of the ground as a baby warden skibbity toilet. Whoa, this is one of the weirdest creatures I've ever been. Still, six hearts, I better play it safe. Suddenly, a gorilla came rumbling towards me across the plains. Invader, invader, you're not meant to be here. That didn't sound like a welcome wagon, so I turned my porcelain tail and ran off at massive speeds. That just rang the alarm bell though. More gorillas came charging in, forming a dangerous chase party. I climbed further up the plateau, managing to lose the gorillas. But the chase exhausted me. I really spawned into the wrong area here. What's going on out here? I feel like there's something I'm forgetting, but ah, I can't remember what I forgot. Boom! The ground next to me exploded, and an even bigger, stronger gorilla crawled out of the hole. Freeze right there. You move one step, and I'll destroy you. Want to live? Follow me, or else. On day two, the big gorilla led me across the plateau. Whatever you think I did, I didn't do it, I swear. I'm a completely innocent warden skibbity toilet. Look, kid, I don't trust wardens, and I don't trust whatever a skibbity toilet is. Want this to go smoothly? All you've got to do is literally everything I say. Well, I guess that's a pretty compelling argument. He took me to some kind of outpost near the top of the plateau. Leading me through the complex, they eventually threw me into a dark, dingy cell in the back. You better behave, toilet boy, or you're gonna get yourself flushed. Lucky for me, I wasn't alone in the cell. There was a squat little Mungus waiting in there for me. Hey, Mungus, I'm Zozo. What are you in here for? Somebody accused me of being an imposter even though I'm not. It's a unique form of discrimination that we munguses have to deal with. Oh, that's horrible. A similar thing happened to me. I don't even really know why I'm here. You're certainly not gonna find your memories here in some goofy gorilla prison. We've gotta get out of here. Do skibbity toilets have any special powers? I don't know, but wardens sure do. That's when I remembered how to warden tree and use it to bust down the wall of our cell. Mungus and I escaped, running off in different directions into the night. Now I can start working on getting my memories back and finding out why I'm really here. On day three, I continued wandering through the plateau, trying my best to avoid any angry gorillas who wouldn't be happy that I'd escaped. In the epic battle of gorilla versus toilet, I personally wouldn't bet on the toilet. But rather than a gorilla, I instead encountered some cows, which made me realize I'm soon gonna get hungry. Hungry. Using my high precision warden shrieks, I blasted one of the cows, then swooped in to take my fill of the delicious beef. Okay, that's something I know about myself now. I enjoy tasty meat, just have to cook it first. I heard a rattling behind me and turned. There was a gang of skeletons coming towards me. Oh no, skeletons don't have any meat on them at all. I'm doomed. With my warden shriek still recharging, I was defenseless and outnumbered. But before the skeletons could get me, a huge lightning bolt came down and destroyed them all. Oh my god. Gosh, what just happened? That's when I turned and saw him. The glorious sight of a tall man with a TV set for a head. He'd fired the lightning bolt and saved my life. Come with me if you want to not die. From day four to day five, I followed the TV man into the shattered glaciers, a freezing and treacherous biome. Man, anyone who lives here must be one tough cookie. I can feel my bones rattling inside my toilet. We arrived at an equally cool pad where the TV man must have lived. It was easily one of the hippest homes I'd ever seen. Thank you again for saving my life, TV man. I'm Zozo. What can I possibly do to repay you? The name's Ray. Cathode Ray. And it's no biggie. I save people all the time. I'm a hero. It's kind of my thing. That's awesome, Ray. Could I be a hero just like you? I don't know what exactly I am, so maybe a hero would be a cool thing to become. I've got it pretty covered, little toilet. But maybe with some training, you could have some potential. Training? Yes! I can move in with you and- With me? No, 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 Little fella, Cathode Ray rolls alone. Here. Take these and go make yourself a place. We'll talk in a couple days. Cathode Ray, the TV man, gave me my first set of stone tools and a stone sword. I left his base and ventured further up the treacherous shattered glaciers. When I found some solid ground on top of a mountain, I was curious to find warped trees here as well. This must be a sign. They look blue just like me. This is it. This is the location for my base. I mined enough material to start building myself a pretty basic house with one bedroom and a furnace so I could finally cook these steaks. Nothing is better than a warm piece of steak. This place isn't much, but it's mine.
Not for long, you stinky toilet! I turned and saw that one of the gorilla guards had somehow followed me here. He wasn't interested in conversation. He wanted to fight, and I needed to defend myself. When he ran in, I blasted him with my warden shriek, then finished him off with my stone sword skills. That gave me enough XP to level up, becoming a bigger, more combat effective warden toilet with 14 hearts and an inbuilt fireball cannon. Oh yeah! Now I'm looking fire! From day six to day eight, I was heading back to tell Cathode Ray about the new power I'd gained, but in the process, I ran into my old prison buddy, Mungus. Hey, Mungus, how have things been swinging for you? I didn't expect to see you out here. Been better, man. Everywhere I go, people keep thinking I'm an imposter. It's really starting to affect my self-esteem. That's terrible, Mungus. I wonder why people around here are so distrusting. I continued on to Cathode Ray and asked him the same question. It doesn't surprise me to hear that, Zozo. You know, there are a lot of folks out here who really can't be trusted. It's why my work as a hero is so incredibly valuable. How can I start doing valuable hero work, Ray? I can shoot fireballs now, and I want to prove myself. If you go to the Stony Peaks, you'll find a deadly yak who's been causing a lot of trouble for the locals. You may be perfectly suited to this job. Send a warden toilet to defeat a warden toilet, I always say. Of course, Ray. Thank you for this opportunity. I won't let you down. With my new mission, I set off across the glaciers towards the Stony Peaks. From day 9 to day 10, I first made my way out to the Stony Peaks. It was a terrain so harsh and unforgiving, it made the shattered glaciers seem downright cozy. I was constantly paranoid that with one wrong move, I'd fall over and get injured, or worse. But after carefully navigating the difficult slopes of the Stony Peaks, I saw the monstrous yak in the distance. I drew my sword and carefully approached. Time for a surprise attack. I shot a fireball at the vicious yak. It turned, ready to attack. Traitor! Perish for your treachery! I fought the creature with my sword, but it was really strong, knocking a bunch of hearts off of me. In the end, I shot another fireball at the monster, and it blew him off the edge of the cliff. He was gone, but it left me badly injured in the process. Oh no, I don't think I'm gonna make it out of here. But a friend of mine was about to come in clutch. That's right, Mungus had found me. Zozo, I heard someone was in trouble. I never knew it'd be you. Yeah, take this healing potion and some steaks. You look like you need it. I truly did. I took the potion and was healed. Thank you, Mungus. I really appreciate that. What are you doing out here? Something's going on, Zozo. Something big. Want to come with me to help look into it all? I would. But first, I need to go tell my mentor about my victory here today. I'm on the up and up. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to Cathode Ray, excited to tell him about my victory against the diabolical Warden Toilet Spider. Well done, little toilet dude. You've proven that you've got the makings of a hero in you. Thank you, Ray. It's an honor to hear that from you. For your next step on the road to heroism, I have another challenge for you. Even deeper in the dark shadows of the Stony Peaks, I need you to find and destroy the Hell Rat. It's every bit as frightening as the name suggests. Sheesh, that sounds pretty scary. That it is, my friend. That it is. I recommend you upgrade your armor and weaponry. Good heroes don't take chances. Good advice, Ray. I scoured the shattered glacier until I found a deep mining cavern. I searched inside, getting deeper and deeper into the dark until I found a dusty old crate. Inside was exactly what I needed. Some pieces of iron armor, an iron sword, and an iron pickaxe. The miners must have left this behind when the place was abandoned. I didn't get to keep my new gear pristine for long because soon enough, the mine was crawling with gorilla guards. You never should have come here. But I wasn't as weak as I used to be. I held my own against the gorillas until they were forced to retreat. Nobody defeats a hero. From day 13 to day 15, I returned to the Stony Peaks with my new iron weapons and armor plating, ready to take on the terrifying Hell Rat. I searched high and low for the Hell Rat's nest, terrified that at any moment it might pop out and destroy me, just like Cathode Ray had told me. But when I eventually found a cute little hut, and inside, I was astonished to find the Hell Rat. But it didn't seem threatening or scary at all. It seems like a pretty innocent, if slightly strange looking, rat. Hey, you don't seem particularly hellish. Why do they call you the Hell Rat? Oh, it's because I come from Hell, the unincorporated community in Livingston County, Michigan. Oh, I suppose that does answer a lot, but not why Cathode Ray sent me here. Sorry for bothering you, Mr. Rat. I could smell a rat, and it wasn't the Hell Rat. I needed to make my way back to the shattered glaciers with 
with no time to waste. From day 16 to day 19, I return to the cold, lonely world of the Shattered Glacier. Cathode Ray has some serious questions to answer. Sending me to hassle innocent rats from Michigan doesn't seem like something a hero would do. But when I arrived at Ray's pad, it was empty, not a soul in sight. Until I heard footsteps behind me. I panicked and turned around, only to see Mungus standing right behind me. Mungus, what are you doing here? I was just about to ask you the same thing. I've been tracking the imposter who's been causing trouble across the server, and whom everyone keeps blaming me for. All signs point to here. Here? That's... that's impossible, but... Oh no, the hell rat! He's in danger! Before Mungus could ask any follow-up questions, I hightailed it out of the shattered glacier and made my way back to the stony peaks. When I arrived, I searched desperately for the place where I'd found the hell rat. But by the time I did, it was too late. Just cathode ray standing in an empty crater. Ray, what have you done? What you were too weak to do, apparently. You can't even stomp some silly rat. Why would I want to? He was innocent. Innocent is just a point of view. Who's innocent, really? I'm sure he did something at some point that made him deserve getting vaporized by me. If that's how you think, then you're not a hero at all. I am a hero, Zozo. And if you're against me, that can only mean you're a villain. Let me show you what I do to villains. Cathode Ray summoned up a huge lightning bolt, and before I could do anything, he fired it at me. And everything went black. From day 20 to day 22, I finally woke up, my damaged toilet body lying among the broken stone of the peaks around me. Somehow, I'd survived. Why didn't Cathode Ray completely destroy me? Because I stopped him. I turned and saw my old prison friend, Mungus, walking towards me. What? You're the first person who believed in me. You think I'd let that TV-headed creep destroy you? No way. I can't believe he used me like that. I thought he was a hero. I thought I was a hero. You still can be, Zozo. Let's go back to your base. Together, I think we can defeat this guy and show the world who he really is. You're right, Mungus. It's the only way. We went back to my base, and we tore down the old base so we had enough space for the new build. I mined up enough raw materials to construct a new building with a room for Mungus to stay in, complete with a bed and couch. You can't really tell what this place will be, so make sure to watch a bit longer to find out as I will finish the base. From day 23 to day 26, I returned to the Savannah Plateau, wanting to see everything with a fresh perspective. Everything with Cathode Ray has got me reconsidering my whole life. But I didn't have time to brood. I saw an undead ostrich getting chased around by a terrifying dark mana core. This looks like a situation where I can prove myself as a real hero. I stormed in, blasting fireballs and warning shrieks at the dark mana core while the undead ostrich was out of the picture. It didn't take long for the mana core to relent, and I finished it off with my iron sword. Afterwards, the undead ostrich came out of hiding and approached me. You saved my life! That was so heroic! Thank you! I'm trying my best, despite not having a great teacher. Your best saved me. So in exchange, here, take some of my power and ascend to greater heights. The ostrich fired an energy blast at me, and I felt myself getting bigger and stronger. Soon enough, I had 26 hearts and a new ability, smash. I tested it out, smashing a huge crazy crater into the ground. Okay, this will be useful later. From day 27 to day 31, while heading back across the Savannah Plateau towards the Shattered Glacier, I encountered a group of chickens. Mmm, even a warden skibbity toilet enjoys some nice fried chicken. I lured the chickens back into the Shattered Glacier and decided I needed to build a pen for them. Before I could do that, I decided to finish up the rest of the base so I can put them in just the right spot. I poured my heart and soul into it. I just hope no one flushes it down. Can't deny the resemblance is uncanny. If you think it looks good, make sure to subscribe so you can see my other amazing videos. As I was taking in the views, the Mungus approached me. Great work, Zozo. Some chicken is exactly what we need. Also, speaking of food, I take the liberty of making us a pantry. We can store excess chicken there. I looked and saw the well-stocked pantry and fully equipped kitchen that Mungus had created. Good job to you too, Mungus. This base is coming along nicely now. Meanwhile, back in Cathode Ray's icy chill pad of evil, he was consulting with his most powerful henchman, the Speaker Head. So you see, Speaker Head, this Zozo needs to be destroyed for the greater good. We can't have a good world with that skibbity warden menace in it. Of course, Mr. Ray. Everybody wants to rule the world, but you're the only one who I trust to see it through. Then go out there and do what needs to be done. 
is the only thing standing in the way of our plans. From day 32 to day 35, I returned once again to the Savannah Plateau. More specifically, I returned to the gorilla base where I'd first been imprisoned. If I thought these guys were evil while I thought Cathode Ray was good, then maybe I had the wrong idea all along. When I arrived at the gorilla base, the huge gorilla who'd first captured me appeared to stand guard. You've got some nerve coming back here, Toilet. After everything you've done, I ought to destroy you right now. Wait, wait, I was misled. And I think you were misled too. I'm on your side. Let me speak to the boss gorilla. Hmm, the boss gorilla isn't actually a gorilla. Come with me. If you try anything funny, I'll hammer you into the ground like a tent peg. The big gorilla directed me inside. I followed his instructions down the hallway until I saw the strangest thing, a floating redstone cube. My goodness, who are you? Me? I am the Cube of Wisdom, the source of all good and righteous knowledge. And if you had spoken to me earlier, I could have told you that Cathode Ray, the TV man, was nothing but a sham. Yes, I'm sorry. I know that now. He's a villain who believes he's a hero. But I want to be a real hero. Together, between me, my friend Mungus, and you and your gorilla forces, we can take down this monster. That's the wisest thing you've said all day, Zozo. From day 36 to day 39, knowing the danger of the threats against me, I searched the shattered glacier yet again until I found another abandoned cave. I searched deep within until I found some more abandoned pieces of iron armor, which I quickly equipped. Using my smash power to bust through the stone further, I found a small vein of diamonds, which I mined with my iron pickaxe. Not enough to make anything yet, but these will come in real handy when I find more of them. I returned to my base with my spoils, where Mungus was waiting for me with good news. Zozo, I crafted some weapons for you while you were gone. Javelins, they should be super effective. Oh, that's awesome, Mungus. This will make me an even more formidable opponent at long range. I left the edge of my base to practice my throwing skills with my new selection of javelins, when suddenly, a gibbon approached. Be not afraid. Don't worry, I wasn't. Oh, okay, uh, okay, let's see, what, what was the message? Uh, oh, uh, I'm an envoy from the Primate Kingdom. My master, the Cube, wishes to speak to you at a secure location in the Twilight Valley. You must journey there at once. It sounded like there was no time to delay. I turned tail and made my way in the direction of the Twilight Valley. From day 40 to day 43, I arrived in the spooky and mysterious Twilight Valley. Following the instructions given to me by the Gibbon, I found a small shack where the redstone cube of wisdom was waiting for me. What's up, Mr. Cube? Why so cloak and dagger? Is everything okay? There's an urgent matter than must be attended to, Zozo. My spies in Cathode Ray's inner circle tell me that he's dispatched one of his most dangerous agents. Speak ahead. What's so dangerous about him? He's a highly skilled and lethal warrior. He's absolutely loyal to Cathode Ray and his cause, and he absolutely hates skibbity toilets. I must leave now, Zozo, but stay safe. You are in grave danger. The redstone cube teleported away, leaving me alone in the Twilight Valley. Or so I thought. The shack exploded, and the speaker head was standing there, wielding a huge sword. There you are. Time to meet your doom, toilet. All for freedom and for pleasure. Without delay, I started firing my warden shrieks and fireballs at him. But there was no effect. He ran at me with his sword and devastated me with one strike. All I could do was turn and run for my life. I'll get you, Zozo. Nothing ever lasts forever. From day 44 to day 49, I was resting and recovering at my base from my encounter with Speakerhead. I was lucky to get out of there alive. Speakerhead wasn't planning on taking prisoners. He was every bit as terrifying as the Redstone Cube suggested. So it made sense that the Redstone Cube would appear next to me in my time of need. You weren't kidding, Cube. That Speakerhead guy is a real demon. Be that as it may, I believe I have a solution for you, Zozo. A weapon that may be capable of destroying that diabolical false hero once and for all. I'm all ears. A blowgun, an ancient tribal weapon wielded by a great warrior. It's said to have special powers when used by a true hero in the name of justice. That sounds perfect. Where can I get it? I'm not sure yet. You will need to seek out the information, return to the Stony Peaks, and seek out other wise creatures. They will give you the knowledge that you seek. 
From day 50 to day 53, I had fully recovered from the stress of my battle with Speakerhead. I ventured out into the stony peaks, wanting to find the wise creatures that the Redstone Cube had spoken of. I'm lucky I don't have any legs, or they'd be getting really tired right about now. When I'd reached the highest peaks of the stony, well, peaks, I found a wise old spider pig waiting for me. Welcome, my son. I am the great spider pig, who sits at the center of the cosmic web of knowledge. I can answer but one question of every person. What is your question, Warden Toilet? I seek the power to defeat evil. Where can I find the legendary ancient blowgun? It will not be easy, my boy. The blowgun lies in the chamber of destiny, deep inside the Cynthian Torrids. It is guarded by a terrible beast. You will need to be incredibly strong to fight it. A terrible beast. Great. For a second there, I was worried this whole thing would be too easy. From day 54 to day 57, I returned to the Savannah Plateau, hoping to share everything I'd learned with the Redstone Cube. But on the way, I was intercepted by a familiar and terrifying foe, Speakerhead. Well, 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 if it isn't my least favorite warden toilet, Zozo. Speakerhead, what are you doing here? I've been listening to you all the way since the spider pig. My master wants me to collect intelligence on you and everything you're doing. But I won't even need that information if I destroy you right here. I threw some javelins at him and tried to hit him with my fireballs, but he was too strong. My turn. He pulled out a destroyer and with one whack, blasted a huge crater in the Earth. I was lucky to have escaped with my life. Meanwhile, back at his base in the Shattered Glacier, Cathode Ray was receiving the information that Speakerhead had stolen. The Scythian Torrids. Interesting. Then it means the blowgun must be guarded by the High Reva. Perhaps I'll let Zozo deal with that one. He can always use the practice. From day 58 to day 62, I was at my base, having at least survived a second encounter with the speaker head. I need some kind of advantage. I can't afford to let him get the jump on me again. I might not be so lucky. I was pulled out of my pessimistic thoughts by Mungus, who strolled over to me with obvious excitement. Zozo, I've been working hard building things while you were gone. I added in a little yard, a bathroom, and a new crafting area, complete with a furnace. Oh, that's genius, Mungus. Just the thing I needed. If I want some new gear, I'm I'm gonna need to forge it myself. With this in mind, I went back to the same mining cavern I'd visited before and dug even deeper into the darkness, using my smash power to go deeper a lot faster than I would with just a pickaxe. Eventually, I found an even richer vein of diamonds and harvested as many as I possibly could. Then, I took them back to the base and put Mungus's crafting room to good use. I forged myself a diamond sword, a diamond pickaxe, and a few pieces of diamond armor. Now I'm a force to be reckoned with. From day 63 to day 66, I heard a great crackling outside my base, like something of immense power had arrived. I walked outside the base and saw the redstone cube of wisdom waiting for me on my decorative toilet. Zozo, it is time. We must travel together to the edge of the shattered glacier. There, we can find the portal to the Scythian Torrids, where the sacred blowgun awaits the arrival of its prophesied user. That, Zozo is you. Then we have no time to waste. Lead the way. I followed the floating cube across the shattered glacier until eventually we reached the impressive looking portal stand. Something is wrong, Zuzu. The portal, it isn't active. Then what do we do? Keep searching. There must be some kind of key. Someone out there has it. We just need you to get our hands on it. Well, we don't have hands, but you get the idea. From day 67 to day 70, while waiting and planning my next steps on the toilet, I was visited by someone I hadn't had the best relationship with, the big gorilla. Zozo, you know I wouldn't come to you if I wasn't desperate, but some unknown force has been fighting my men in the Twilight Valley while we try to search for the key to the Cynthian Torrids. And I'm guessing you want me to come in there and fight it? Yeah, pretty much. But you better not gloat about it. Cause I'm a nice guy, I didn't gloat. Just flushed the toilet and made a beeline for the Twilight Valley, where I saw what had been giving the gorilla so much trouble. A cosmically powerful Shiba Inu. Be gone, intruder! You will never get your hands on the key! Leave my valley! Wait, listen to me! If you use this key for evil, I will- Listen! I'm not here to do evil! I'm here to stop it! 
You said something about a key? Is it the key to the Scythian Torrids? Yes, the very same. I seek the blowgun from the Chamber of Destiny. For what purpose do you seek it? I wish to obtain the blowgun and use it to defeat the evil known as Cathode Ray. That is a noble goal. The key is yours. If you misuse it, I'll destroy you myself. Shiba and you disappeared, leaving behind a magical looking key, which I immediately picked up. I'm one more step closer to completing my quest. From day 71 to day 74, I was returning to my base, excited to tell Mungus about the key. But I had bigger things on my mind. Speakerhead was back, and he was destroying my base. You're too late, Zozo. I know everything. You can't stop us now. I can tell you're a speakerhead even from a distance, because you're such an annoying loudmouth. Don't get mad, Zozo. Get even. If you're brave enough, I'll be waiting near Ray's pad. Come and get some, loser. Speaker had laughed and disappeared. Then, Mungus came out of hiding to speak to me. How did he cause us much damage, Mungus? He used his destroyer, an incredibly powerful weapon. Darn, that man has such a thorn in my side. It doesn't need to be all bad, Zozo. Maybe if you go and destroy Speakerhead, you'll get his destroyer. Then you can use it in the Scythian Torrents to get the blowgun. That's a great idea, Mungus. But are you sure you'll be okay here alone? I can handle myself, Zozo. I'll rebuild the base while you're gone. Then it looks like we've got a plan. Little did I know, all of this was part of Cathode Ray's grand plan. Once he's dispatched dear Speakerhead, he'll be strong enough to enter the Scythian Torrids. Then, the blowgun will be mine, and nothing will be able to stop me. <laughs> From day 75 to day 78, I was preparing for the battle with Speakerhead when the Redstone Cube of Wisdom came to impart some of his trademark wisdom. Fight hard, Hunter there, Sozo. We're all counting on you. Thanks, Redstone Cube. Is, is that it? And then he left. From day 79 to day 84, I wasted no time in charging to the dark depths of the Shattered Glacier. Speakerhead, you will face me in single combat. That was clearly enough to summon him because Speakerhead immediately appeared. It was almost too perfect. Ready to be destroyed, Zozo? Well, clearly you are, since you're here. Please stop talking. I'd rather just fight. I charged at Speakerhead, wielding my diamond sword. Even with the aid of my powers, I was so hopelessly outmatched. Face it, Zozo, you're doomed. You can't beat me. That's when I suddenly felt a surge of energy coming up from the key the Shiba Inu gave me. The power to fight against evil. I evolved into a warden spider skibbity toilet. I was bigger, stronger, and suddenly had 100 hearts and the ability to shoot lasers. Speakerhead was so shocked. What? No, you can't do that. Seems like I can. Bye bye, Speakerhead. With a supercharged blast of my laser, Laser attack, Speaker Head was destroyed once and for all. In his place was the Destroyer, which I picked up immediately. Just you and me now, Ray. From day 85 to day 89, I returned to the base with the Destroyer and the key. And with 100 hearts, I was finally ready to go to the Cynthian Torrids. I'm ready to do this, Mungus. So glad, Zozo. And look, I repaired the base. I turned and saw that Mungus was true to his words. The base had been rebuilt. Everything was coming up roses. The one thing left to do is go claim the blowgun. Then we can defeat Cathode Ray and end all this horror. My heart filled with determination, I made my way towards the portal standing deep in the shattered glaciers and used my key to open it. Scythian Torrids, here I come. I immediately felt the dark, dry heat of the Torrids on the other side. It was a sinister place filled with molten lava and strange unknown creatures. After hours of wandering, I found a large, distinct structure that must have been the Chamber of Destiny. There's the chamber. Let's go see the beast. I walked into the chamber, which was deceptively quiet at first, until a huge, terrifying High Reaver leaped out. Oh, there's the beast. It took everything to be able to defeat the High Reaver. The blade of my diamond sword, my fireballs, my javelins, my laser eyes, and of course, the destroyer. It was a hard battle, and I lost plenty of hearts. But in the end, the High Reaver was defeated, and the blowgun was left on the ground. Cathode Ray, you've got a big storm coming. From day 90 to day 94, I left the Chamber of Destiny with the blowgun in hand. 
With this, I'd finally be able to destroy Cathoid Ray once and for all. But before I could find my way to the portal, I was hit by a lightning that completely paralyzed me from the neck down. The blowgun fell out onto the floor. Oh no, who could have done this? Unsurprisingly, Cathoid Ray emerged from the darkness. He had total power over me. So, it has come to this. You know, Zozo, we could have worked well together. Imagine the heroics we would have accomplished together. You've never done anything heroic in your life, Ray. You're just a villain who's lying to himself. You're going to regret this, Zozo. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. I'd destroy you right now, but I want you to live long enough to see my revenge play out in full. While I couldn't move, he built a stone cage around me, trapping me within. By the time I could move again, Cathode Ray was long gone. From day 95 to day 97, I tried different methods to bust down the walls of the prison that Cathode Ray had built around me. Out of all the power-ups, only the destroyer worked. But there was no time to waste. I needed to get back to the Savannah Plateau immediately and warn the Redstone Cube of Wisdom. When I was back in the overworld, I ran as fast as I could until I reached the plateau. But I wasn't fast enough. The Gorilla Outpost base had been left in ruins and all the gorillas were gone. All that was left was the heavily injured Redstone Cube of Wisdom. Sozo, Cathode Ray went on a cathode rampage. He's cleaning house trying to destroy everyone he can. Oh no, this is all my fault. I gave him the blowgun. He'll be invincible. He has one weakness, Zozo. Because he has a TV for a head, he doesn't have a mouth. So he can't actually use the blowgun. Get it back, Zozo, and use it to bring Ray's reign of terror to an end. The redstone cube passed away, leaving me alone on the cold and dusty plateau. On day 98, I made a beeline back to my base. I needed to warn Mungus so he didn't end up like the gorillas or the redstone cube of wisdom. When I saw the state of my base, I feared I was too late. Everything Mungus and I had worked on was destroyed. Cathode Ray had almost annihilated the base. Oh no, did he destroy Mungus just like he destroyed the redstone cube? To my immense relief, Mungus emerged from the rubble. Please, I'm a lot harder to destroy than that. Mungus, you're alive! Cathode Ray was so focused on angrily destroying our base that he didn't even notice me. That's one small relief, but Cathode Ray still has the blowgun. I can't defeat him without it. Don't worry, Zozo. I have a plan. Let's go to Ray's pad together. I've got my own score to settle. You distract him, I'll steal back the blowgun. Then you can finish him off once and for all. Sounds like a plan to me, Mungus. On day 99, Mungus and I ventured deep into the shattered glacier to execute our cunning plan. We arrived outside Cathode Raid's pad and shared some final encouraging words. You can do this, Mungus. I'll keep his attention on me. See you on the other side, buddy. Mungus snuck into the base. When he was gone, I shot my fireballs at Cathode Ray's base. He immediately stormed outside. Revenge, then. I figured you'd come out here after you saw what I did to your base and your worthless friends. At least now I can finish you once and for all. Yeah, you can do that, Ray, but you'll need to catch me first. I ran as fast as I could as Cathode Ray chased me, shooting lightning after me. I ran until I'd lost him, then made a beeline back to the base. I met Mungus outside Ray's pad. He gave me the blowgun. Finish this, Zozo. And with that, he fled into the forest, leaving me alone at Ray's pad. On day 100, I used my fireballs and laser beams to wreak destruction on Cathode Ray's base. I blew up walls and annihilated rooms, and with the destroyer, I smashed a huge crater into the ground. And using my own smash ability, I annihilated everything I could, sending his whole kingdom crashing down around me. I'm gonna do what you did to me, and to the redstone cube, and all those gorillas. I'll leave you with nothing. All the noise attracted Cathoid Ray himself, who stormed in, ready to fight, wielding a massive sword. You worthless little bidet. My perfect pad. How could you ruin it like this? I am a hero. How many times do I need to tell you there's nothing heroic about you? You're just a big, cruel bully who wants people to like him. And it's clear you're not gonna like me, so I may as well destroy you, your villain. The battle began. Cathode Ray was strong, but now I was ready to face him. I threw in javelins and blasted fireballs. I hit him with laser beams and warden shrieks and even whacked him with the destroyer. No, this is impossible. For the finishing blow, I pulled out my blowgun, channeling all the power of the redstone cube. With one blast, the scourge of Cathode Ray was finally destroyed. The only hero here is me.